Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. It is nearly Halloween here at the Lair of Voltaire and you might be wondering what your Halloween costume is going to be this Halloween. I can tell you that last year I wanted to be the King of Halloween. I mean, who am I kidding? I want to be the King of Halloween every single day. More specifically, I want to be a pumpkin king. You know, like a traditional old-timey Halloween pumpkin king in like a velvet Victorian frock and like a big jack-o'-lantern mask. But I got to wondering, those masks are probably really hard to make and I wonder if I even know how to make one myself. And then, a miracle occurred. In the Joanne Fabric Store, I spotted this handsome fellow and wondered, hmm, can I transform this beautiful Halloween prop into the head of my Pumpkin King costume. I think it's gonna take a lot of work, but I think it's gonna help me get ahead on my Halloween costume. I'd still need to get it back to New York City, and well, let me just say, it gave all new meaning to the words overhead space. That jack-o'-lantern made quite a stir on that tiny little American Airlines flight. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty entertaining. Well, here on Gothic Homemaking, I have a phrase I like to use, and that is mundane to macabre. I like to transform things from the mundane to the macabre. And we're gonna do that today. Now, this prop is not exactly mundane. It is a really, it's a really quite nice Halloween pumpkin, but I think I can make it more realistic and perhaps a bit scarier. And that is today's challenge. Let's get to work. Due to limited space at the lair, I'll be working on the haunted library end table, but we'll want to cover this thing up so we don't damage it. Voila! We are ready to work. Now I'm going to bring in the star of the show, our handsome jack-o'-lantern prop, and I plan to wear this on my head. However, the hole at the bottom is quite small, so the first thing I need to do is measure my head. I grabbed myself a tape measure and I measured my head. It's apparently about 26 inches around if you make uh, room for my nose to get in and out of this thing. But now, how do we make that hole in the bottom of the pumpkin? Well, it turns out I have this bat bowl that's about exactly 26 inches. So I just placed that on the bottom of our jack-o'-lantern and I traced the outline. Then I pulled out my Dremel tool with a saw blade attachment, perfect for uh, you know cranial surgery and things of that nature. And I started to cut that hole in the bottom of our plastic pumpkin. Next, I gave my pumpkin a bath to get all of the dust off of it. And now my head fits inside. I am the Pumpkin King! <laughs> I can feel it in my bones! The first and most important part of this job is done because it now can be worn as a mask. But this stem, I think, could be more realistic. I grabbed myself some armature wire, and I drilled a hole at the top of the stem using my drill. Next, I fashioned a decidedly more gnarly stem for my pumpkin out of the wire. And I hot glued that into the hole I made in the stem. That already looks more realistic. And to make sure it was really gonna stay in there, I added some hot glue to the inside as well. Next, we have to beef up or corpse this stem. And to that end, I used Mod Podge and these tissue streamers. I simply painted the Mod Podge onto the stem and my wire, going all the way to the ends. And then I cut pieces of these tissue streamers and started to wrap them and mold them around the wire to give the illusion of some gnarly bark. In between layers, I added more Mod Podge. And eventually my stem looked like this. It's much better now. Next, I applied Mod Podge to the entire surface of the jack-o'-lantern just to make sure that whatever paint I put on here is gonna stick and not slide right off of that smooth plastic exterior. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I grabbed some acrylic paints and I painted the stem brown. While the paint was still wet, I wiped some off with some wet tissues. This gives it a somewhat more weathered and realistic appearance. Next, I grab myself some of this orange autumn garland to see if we can't use some of these leaves to make this stem look a little bit more realistic. With my knife, I made some holes in the stem and I inserted the stem of these leaves into that hole. And for good measure, I hot glued it in place. 
I think that's looking pretty good already. I think these green leaves are gonna give it a little bit of life, and I think this is just the spot for them. So once again, I made a little hole, and I hot glued my leaf right into the stem. I think this is another good spot for a leaf. And there we have it. That's already looking more realistic to me. Next, I put down some cardboard, and I mixed up some orange and brown acrylic paints. I'm a little bit nervous about this, so I like to start on the back, because if it doesn't look good, it won't be that noticeable. <laughs> and I'm gonna sponge the paint on with a sponge like this, so it doesn't go on exactly solid. You get more of a mottled texture, and I think it'll be more realistic that way. And now that it's looking pretty good, I feel confident about painting the front. So I grab my sponge, and I sponge the paint onto the front as well. That's already looking so much better. But I think the recessed parts I think could use a little bit of shadowing. So, I grabbed some black paint and I painted those parts black. And look at that. Now that's starting to look like a creepy jack-o'-lantern. To give it a little bit more interest, I made a lighter shade of orange and I sponged that on as well. Now that's looking a little pink, but don't be alarmed because after a few coats of different colors, it looked like this. Now it's ready to wear, except I noticed that because of the shape of the pumpkin, when I put it on my head, it has a tendency to lean forward. I'd be looking down all the time, but I have an idea. I grabbed some of this air conditioner foam. Now it comes in these rectangular strips. I got some hot glue and my plan is to glue it into the inside of this pumpkin. I really should have done this in different pieces, but I don't know what possessed me to do it in one long piece. Like this is a nightmare waiting to happen. Luckily, I'm a professional, so you know I didn't burn myself, right? And just to be on the safe side, I put another layer as well. Now, I think that's really gonna help the fit, having that foam in there. Now, this rim looks like it could be rather uncomfortable, but I have a solution for that as well. I use this polyfoam pipe insulation foam. Now, this stuff comes with a slit right down the middle, so you just wanna open that slit up with your thumb, which is really quite easy to do. And then I was able to just slip it onto the rim of the opening of the jack-o'-lantern, and that'll just fit right in there. Now, to make it look a little bit more realistic, I grabbed some more of that autumn garland and wrapped it around the neck area. Now that rim looks a little unnatural, so the next step is to grab some Mod Podge and I painted that on the foam once again so that I could paint it and the paint will stick, but it also helps the leaves stick to the foam. And last but not least, I painted the foam with orange paint. And there you have it. There is my Pumpkin King mask. I absolutely love how this thing came out. It makes for a really great mask, but I have to tell you, you do not have to wear this as a Pumpkin King mask. You can also use it in a different way. If you get yourself a really cool light fixture like this one and put it inside, you're going to have a fantastic Halloween prop. And now is the fateful moment for the before and after. Here is the before. And here is the after. I hope you feel this transformation has been successful. I really enjoyed working on this project and I love this mask. I wore this mask as uh, my King of Halloween costume last year and it was a huge hit. It was a big hit with the kids, it was a big hit with the adults. I wore it on a float in the New York City Village Halloween uh, Parade and I was featured on the front cover of the newspaper because of it. And it's probably because this is such an iconic old-timey Halloween costume. I think I'll be wearing this for years to come. In fact, I'm even wearing it on the cover of my new Halloween album, The Last Halloween party. I hope you enjoy this transformation and I hope you get to use some of these techniques at home on one of your projects. See you next time right here on Gothic Homemaking.
Well, that's gonna leave a mark. Ah, 